Well, hello there, ladies and gents. I'm Tammy Sipniewski. Thank you so much for popping by my channel. And this is the most requested video that I get from you guys. How do we color grade our footage inside of LumaFusion? Before we jump into the overhead camera though, I just wanna give you a few tips that are really gonna make it so much easier for you in your post process edit. So step number one of color grading is going to be color correction. Now color correction, I mean, that can really be an art form, seriously. Bearing in mind that we're using LumaFusion and it has limitations in that area, there's things that we need to do while we're capturing our video to make it so much more efficient for us on that aspect. Now, when I say it's handicapped or limitations, I'm not bashing it at all. For 30 bucks, we're lucky to have it, but it doesn't have uh, vector scopes, waveforms, and waveforms make it so much easier to color correct. Now, when I say color correction, I know this is gonna sound bizarre, but when you color correct, you wanna make sure that your colors are correct. Crazy, isn't it? So what I do to color correct, when I hit record on my camera, I bring in this sign. You may have seen this sign hanging around the office, but what I do is I bring it into frame. This way, when I go to color correct, I can note the whites are white and the blacks are black. And in case you're confused by what I'm talking about, don't worry, it's going to make sense once we get into LumaFusion. Hey, it's funny. Sometimes I'm holding this and my girlfriend's like, oh, you look like you're posing for a mugshot. Which is pretty funny, I have to say. Another important feature of capturing your video is going to be making sure that your camera is properly exposed, that you have the white balance set properly, and that you're filming in the flattest profile that's available on your camera. I'm a Canon user, for me, it's going to be neutral, but I've also installed another profile called CineStyle. Even within CineStyle, I pull all the values down to zero. So contrast is down to zero, saturation is down to zero, sharpness is down to zero, everything is as low as it can go. This way it gives you better control over the dynamic range of your footage when you go to bring it into edit. If you're filming with your phone, there's a really great app called Filmic Pro. And what Filmic Pro does is basically give you control over your phone as if it were a camera. You can change to 24 frames a second, change your frame rate, you can change the white balance, and you could even put in those flat profiles. I think when I purchased the a flat profile bundle, I think it was an additional $10. It was well worth it though. So if you don't have Filmic Pro and you're using your phone, look into it. I think you're gonna be very, very happy with it. So, okay, I think uh, that's about it. Let's go ahead, jump into the overhead camera and I'll walk you through all the steps that I take to color grade my footage. I downloaded the footage I just filmed and now that I'm looking at it, I can see I didn't set up my hair light. Yay me. That's okay, we're gonna go ahead and color correct and grade this anyway, so let's double tap the clip to get into the edit window. Of course, that's gonna bring us right to the color and effects window. Now, remember when I told you that you need to pull down all of the components of your very flat picture profile, like the sharpness, the contrast, everything. What we wanna do is begin to add that stuff back in. So the first thing that I do when I begin to color correct and color grade, I add in the sharpness. So go to the water drop icon and go down until you see sharp. Now there's three different options for sharp, but I always just use the one time sharp. That's plenty enough for me. And I like to bring it down to about the low 60s. I think that looks really good. So now what we wanna do is begin the color correction process. So let's hit the paint palette. Now you can see there's a lot of presets already here inside of LumaFusion. So let's say it's all too much, you're very confused by it, you don't know what to do, but you just wanna throw a quick, beautiful color on your image. I really like my second light died. I forgot where I was. Oh, okay. So if you want to throw just a pop of color onto your footage, I really like the look of this vibrance. Let's go ahead and tap that. And look how much that added to the footage. I think that really brightened up the image. It added a nice pop of color. So I really like that option. If you're unsure what to do, always go with vibrance. And even though you pick vibrance, you're still able to go in here 
and dial down any colors or saturation or vibrance. You can use your vibrance as a starting off point and just tweak it from there. But being that this is a color grading tutorial, we're gonna get rid of that. And what we're gonna do is tap on the original option. That's going to drop down this entire window. This is going to give us control over this image. Everything that we want to tweak in this image, we can do with these different sliders. We're limited here, but like I said, LumaFusion has its handicaps, but it's only 30 bucks, so it's, it's really good for what it is. Now, the first thing that we want to begin to do is work with this level slider right here. This is going to allow us to manipulate our midtones, our shadows, and our highlights. So the midtones is always the very first thing that you want to do. You want to fool around with this until you get to an area of where you think your colors look the best. And by that, I'm using the sign as a reference. So I'm going to pull that up until I see my whites are white or down. Sometimes it's different depending on the, where, where you are, if you're inside or outside. And now what we want to do is manipulate the shadows because now I'm looking to get those blacks black. Okay, now I'm going to fool around with the highlights again. Just getting that image. I don't want it artificially bright. I just want it to be a little closer to the color where it should be. And I think that looks really good. So being that my camera was properly exposed, my white balance was set, I actually didn't have to move that around too much. But once we begin to add in colors and add in contrast and saturation, and we drop in a LUT, we might have to go back and tweak that a little bit more. So it's never really finished until it's absolutely perfect. So now as we finish that component, I want to take another look at this image and just see if I'm happy with the coloring. And I can see in my hands, the skin tone is a little off. It's a little red. I'm a little, little red on the chest and on the apple of the cheeks. And it's not makeup. It just looks like it's artificially red. So I want to pull down the redness of my skin in this image. So what we want to do is, oops, nope, not that. I want to go down here until we're down to the color slider. So I want to pull the red out of here by introducing in the greens. So we're going to pull down red into the greens. Not too much because we don't want to, I don't want to look sick. Maybe add in just a little bit. Now we just want to continue tweaking these until we find what we're happy with. Okay, I think that looks good. I think I think that looks really good. Okay, so now what we want to do is begin to add in the elements we took out of the camera, like the contrast. And I don't like to add in too much contrast because like, look, look what happens when you put in too much contrast. It just, you know, it muddies everything up. It loses its clarity. So make sure you're not blowing out the contrast there. That might even be too much. I think that looks good. Now you want to add in your saturation and your vibrance. Okay, so from here, now what I want to do, after I'm happy with everything, here's the, oh, before I get to the LUT though, let me just bring you down to the gamma and hue slider. Of course, the hue slider, I'm sure you guys have fooled around with this already, but if you want to do a special effect where you change up the color of your skin, make it weird kind of colors, that's what you would use the hue slider for. The gamma slider, I really would equate that to like the ISO in your camera. So if your footage is completely underexposed, you think there's no way of saving it because it's just completely too dark, you can use this gamma slider pull it down and make it significantly brighter or bring it down and make it a little darker. Whatever it is that you think is lacking of that image, you can fix it with the gamma slider. And But be just be warned, like ISO, 
the more gamma you're introducing into it, the more noise that's also going to be introduced into your image. So if at all possible, you can get away with not using the gamma, don't use it. Okay, so now we're going to work with the LUTs. So we're going to go over to the cube because all the LUTs are saved in a dot cube format. And I have a studio LUT. So I'm going to go down to studio LUT. Everything is in alphabetical order. And that's my studio LUT. Please never use the full value of your LUT because that would just, if I put that video out, it would look completely ridiculous, right? It just would look phony and cartoonish. So pull it all the way down to where there's no LUT showing whatsoever. Slowly go up from there and see what looks good. Without looking too phony. And actually, I think that looks really good. Let me just see what a little more look. Now, right off the bat, if I go up too high, looks weird. I think right about there looks good because I, I can see that the wall here is still gray. This still has a purplish hue. Uh, my skin looks good. Looks like it normally does. It doesn't have a red hue, but it just gave it a nice little color pop. Let's move it around just because, you know. And I just want to move it around a little bit because... Sometimes when you move the lighting changes and I just want to make sure it's not too much in a certain area. I think that looks good. Let's go back to original. And now I just want to come back to the contrast and see if I can add in just a, a touch more contrast a little bit. And I think that looks really good. I just want to tell my ladies out there though, my ladies, see how it looks like I barely have any makeup on? Looks like I have nothing. I actually have a lot of makeup on, but there's something about studio lights that completely wash out and wash away your makeup, just so that you know. Now that we're done with this, I'm going to exit out of here. Now we're going to get into outside footage. So let's go ahead and double tap on this. And I'm not going to explain everything again. I'm just going to roll through this just so that you can see how fast you can actually do this once you've done it before. See, with outside footage, it's a little different. I'm actually going down with the mid-tones. And by the way, my jacket is black. This hat is, it originally was white, but it's not white anymore because it's so old. I'm a little dirty, so using that as a reference. And of course my car seats are gray, so. And yes, my skin looks a little, a little shiny because I wear, I'm old, I need moisturizer. Okay, I think that looks good. I'm gonna throw on my LUT here. Now for the outside LUT, I use one called uh, Cinema Base, and this is made by a guy named Nick Fort. Look what a beautiful LUT that is. I mean, it's up all the way. I, would, I just wanna show you something about this LUT though. Sometimes you purchase LUTs, and when you slap on the LUT and you have it up all the way, you'll see no definition in the shadows. They're completely crushed out, that is a sign of a poorly constructed LUT. Look at this LUT. It's up all the way. There's definition everywhere. So this guy knows what the heck he's doing. So let's go and just drag this up a little bit. And man, that's exactly, exactly the coloring that I had. Now I did have on a little bit of extra makeup that day, but Something about the sunlight, there's a difference between natural sunlight and studio lights. Makeup will show up a little better in natural sunlight. And that is going to do it. 
Ah, what a difference a hair light makes. Listen, if you made it this far into the video, I thank you. You're awesome. Hello, Anthony. I'm going to leave a special gift for you in the description box below. But I'm going to hide it because I know a lot of people description box surf just looking for free stuff. So all the way at the very bottom, all the way past all of my Amazon affiliate links, I am going to leave a link to my Google Drive and I am going to share with you my studio LUT. So thank you very much for watching. Oh, and by the way, if you don't have a sign like this... For your color correction reference, I'm also going to leave a link for a color checker card in the description box. Some of them are very expensive, but the one that I'm going to link is about $11, which is plenty fine for what we're working with in LumaFusion. If you're doing more professional commercial work, you probably should get something like the Passport color checker, but that's like $250. We don't need that for LumaFusion. That $11 card is going to be plenty. So that's going to be in the description box below as well. I thank you so much for joining me. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them. And I will, of course, try to get back to them just as soon as I can. But until next time, please wear your sunblock and please wash your hands for at least 20 seconds and be safe. Thank you.